Hi everyone, my name's Mad Matt Lugos and welcome to Soma. So if you've never watched one of my playthroughs before, I like to play single player, story focused games where we can take our time, explore, go a bit slower and focus on the story, the characters, the narrative, the lore and all that good stuff. So if I sound like someone you want to maybe come along on this harrowing journey with, then I hope you join me for Soma. So, um, just so you know, I'm not great with horror, guys, you know, uh, I'm not a big horror fan, but I've been, this game has been recommended on the basis that it has an incredibly engrossing story, narrative, characters and all that, so, um, that, those are the kind of games I love. If it's in a horror setting, then so be it. I am sure that that will add something to it. Um, but just, I, I can be a little bit jumpy, a little bit on edge when it comes to stuff like this, so that's just a little disclaimer for you. In case I, you know, squeal like a guinea pig or something at some point during this game. So, <laughs> as far as I understand it, Soma is like a first-person kind of psychological horror um, about a character called Simon who's gone through a personal loss and has gone through like a TBI or a brain injury, um, and he's dealing with the consequences of the loss and of the injury kind of simultaneously and it's going to be in like a kind of pseudo sci-fi setting I believe underwater um, and because I'm on this kind of run of this kind of series of sci-fi or cyberpunk themed or inspired games this kind of fits in with that as kind of sci-fi horror so yeah that's all that's what I know about Soma uh, I've, I've just played the the intro of the game you know a bit just to just to see how the game ran because the game has some performance issues on pc um i was getting quite a lot of screen tearing trying to lock it at 60 the v-sync on off so i've just decided to max my frame rate out but keep the v-sync on the screen tearing seems to have stopped let me know if there's anything i should do this is the settings i've got on we've got v-sync on got it locked to my monitor's refresh rate because 60 seems to be generating screen tears uh we've got everything turned up um reflection and refraction on so yeah uh, we're not playing the game on safe mode or anything you know I, I do general in general i do believe it's best to play games on hard or on the difficulty that it's supposed to where it's a bit challenging um it's fine if anyone else wants to play it on those difficulties i'm not judging but um personally i think if, if we make it a bit challenging for me because I'm, I'm terrible with horror it might enhance the experience for us somewhat so when I, I, I realise you're not supposed to do long intros for first episodes, but I can't help it. I'm stalling because I'm nervous, but let's get started with Soma, guys. It's not yet normal and safe. Let's uh, start a new game. <laughs> Off we go. We've got the red background for danger, because <laughs> I think that's appropriate for this game. I am drinking coffee, though, so that might, not, that might put me on edge even more. All right. Reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. Philip K. Dick. Are you okay, Simon? I think you're bleeding. Oh, that, that's nothing. It's just my brain can't stop bleeding from the accident. Here, take this. No, that, that's for later, for the scan. It's green. No, it was Actually, red. I need to tell you something. Simon, please don't make this weird. No, no, it's not like that. Why now? Who's David Munchie? Why is there never enough time? For what? <laughs> okay, that is a very loud vibrate. Yeah, I'm Hello. up. Simon Jarrett? Yeah, that's me. My name is David Munchie. We oh. spoke earlier. The brain scan. I remember. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, just a bad dream. Are, are we still on for today? Yeah, that's why I'm calling. I wanted to remind you to drink the tracer fluid I sent you. It'll help me capture a better image of the damages. Don't worry, I, I, I got it somewhere. Okay, great. Well, I'll see you in a couple of hours then. Okay, see you soon. Okay, no screen tearing, good. Okay, so um, I, I should probably have a notepad here, right? Because I feel like we're gonna need to pay attention because 
Where did I put the tracer fluid? Hang on, Simon. So, we had a few names mentioned there. We obviously answered the phone to the doc. I'm guessing he's a doctor, right? So, um, we had Ashley was the girl in the car with us. We were obviously dreaming. We've got David Munchy. Munchy? David M. Who's Come possibly on, radioactive tracer fluid? Where <laughs> a, are you? A neurologist, psychiatrist, psychologist, maybe. Um, he said about his brain bleeding. Okay, so the one problem I think we're going to have is is that I compress everything. <laughs> so um, right trigger to interact with this stuff. Let's get the lights to. Can we turn the lights on? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we can pick up everything. Press left bumper while holding an object to throw it. Take that cup. That's an electrical hazard right there. Okay. So uh, you can rotate. Okay, sorry. You can rotate the object. We. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we can inspect plenty of objects. So let's. Uh, we need to have a look around our apartment. Um, we'll come back to you, draw. We've got a message. What was that? Press right. Oh, never mind. Hey Simon, it's Jesse. Jesse. You this weekend or what? I knew there was something you were doing. Was it this weekend or next? Anywho, just shoot me a mail or something. Love you, miss you, mean it. End of messages. I swear, that guy has the memory of a goldfish. Okay, so... I even sent an email to remind him, didn't I? Okay, so we got Jesse. Uh, close friend or relative. Worried about us, maybe. So, we're obviously drinking this fluid for some sort of scan. A CT scan, maybe. Um, so, we can look at absolutely everything in here. It's another... Let's get the lights turned on. To open doors and containers, first interact with them and pull using the right stick. Okay. There we go. Summer's coming. Hope it's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, me too, Simon. Right, let's um let's have a look around here. See if we can get some information about who Ash this Ashley chick is. Maybe. Let's have a look in here. Home. Can we read this? Oh. Okay, Robin McConnell hooked. Um, view the text. Okay, I'll do this because because it's I'd, I'd usually just try and read it the way it is, but this is a bit clearer for recording, right? Mark and Diana Miller have finally caught a break. They've managed to save up enough money to take the family on that vacation to Hawaii they've been talking about for so long. But as the sun sets over Waikiki Beach that first day, Mark and Diana's paradise turns into a nightmare as swimmers are caught in thousands of thin strings stretching from somewhere below the waves. Slowly, swimmers are pulled screaming into the dark water. Desperate to get out of harm's way, their seven-year-old son, Charlie, is caught by the vicious tendrils. Suspenseful, mystical, and absolutely terrifying, Hooks will pull you in. Okay, so maybe um, Simon has an interest in in horror, horror novels, you know, thrillers, that kind of stuff. Maybe that's going to have an influence. Uh, Toronto Film Festival, so maybe we live in Canada. Perhaps, maybe Simon will be very polite. <laughs> That's all I know about Canadians. Okay, just close in those drawers. Uh, a wilting plant. What have we got here? Okay, Mapping Minds by Albert Isaacson. Widely praised as one of the most comprehensive yet accessible texts about the anatomy of the human brain, its function and our perception of consciousness. Find out how your brain is dependent on its body, why the brain is simply not a computer, and a multitude of other interesting facts that will make your head spin. This edition also includes two new chapters about the development of the brain and how it affects our behavior in different stages of our lives. 
So I feel like I should have said this in the, in the intro, but I, this, as, this is a psychological horror game. Uh, I do have a degree in psychology. I'm not. I'm no expert, but uh, there'll be little tidbits that'll. You know, I'm not. I'm not an expert on neuroscience. I did have to write a few papers on neuroscience, but uh, it was on kind of specific aspects of it. And the neuroscience exam was really quite difficult, if I'm being honest. Oh, so uh, an avid photographer, perhaps. Uh, have we got anything on the camera? No. Let's not break the DSLR. <laughs> uh, photography books. Oh, we've got some uh, photographs. Cup of tea. Insects. City at sunset. Okay, nothing else we can read. Looks like we can go on the computer. Can get out of the way, chair. Um, these are glowing. Um, I can't tell what that says. Just some little sketches. A convention. Something. Volume 7 to 12 convention. Can't quite make that out. Get well soon, love mum. Diagnosis, sick. Treatment, love. Dr. Phil. Okay. Oh, no, that's just something we can pick up. What have we got here? Simon Jarrett, Pace Laboratories. Uh, Dr. Aaron Peak, St. Mary Hospital, Toronto. Yep, so we are in Canada. A signature from Dr. Erin Peak. Uh, so it's just a, what, a prescription for contrast tracer fluid, perhaps? Oh, who have we got here? Okay, so... I, I don't know, Ash... That girl, Ashley, in our dream, had glasses on, right? So that might not be her, it might be uh, someone else. Uh, a beach. Uh, the Grimoire presents Robin McConnell. Meet and greet book signing. So that's the author of that horror book that was in our bedside table. Uh, some nice corduroys there on the beach. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, let's get that turned on. So we've got our computer here. Let's have a little look on here. Um, okay, so this is from the Dr. Day. Oh, I don't know if he's a doctor, but it's from David Munchie. The Neurograph Session. Thank you again for, part for participating in our research. The scan will be performed at the Pace Laboratories in Toronto. But since we're guests, our access is a bit unpredictable. I'll try and schedule a scan for Saturday. I'll get you back. I'll get back to you when confirmed. Sincerely, David Munchie. So this is research. This is experimental, which is already a bit of a red flag, right? Okay, from Dr. Aaron Peake, a new prescription, and dear Mr. Jarrett, I'm happy to hear your headaches have become less frequent. Your latest tests show your brain is slowly recovering, but it's still too early to tell how well it will adjust to the damage. The bleeding will continue over the coming months, at least, and you will need to come to the hospital a few times to drain the cavity to prevent blood from building up pressure. Since excessive stress could be fatal, I have written you a prescription Prazosin to help you with your nightmares. Please read the instructions and medicate accordingly. Try to get a lot of rests and I'll see you next week. Sincerely, Dr. Erin Peake. I'm sorry, but if someone's if someone had a bleed on the brain and the brain was still bleeding, they would not be discharged from hospital. There's no way. <laughs> if you had a bleed on the brain and it was and the, and they knew it was still bleeding, they would not discharge you. The bleeding will continue. There's no way you'd be discharged, man. No way. Okay, Jesse, the Grimoire. Oh, I forgot Saturday to hit send. Off. Oh, right. Hi, Jesse. Since you probably forgot, here's me reminding you that I've got that doctor's appointment tomorrow, i.e. I'm not coming into work. This means you need to make sure you're actually on time to open up the store. And please unpack the boxes behind the counter. They're starting to become a workplace hazard. Also, books tend to sell much better if they're, if they're put on shelves where people are able to actually see them. Good luck. You'll need it. Simon. Okay, so let's send that email. Um, Better late than never. Okay, so Simon is owns a 
book stop, book stop, book shop. Um, and Jesse's his colleague who is his assistant, helps him run the shop. Um, let's write that down. So he might not be interested in horror books. He might just, that might just be for business. She was coming in for a book signing at his place of work, I believe. Oh, God. I pressed uh, the wrong button there. Um, is that all we can look at on the computer? Looks that way. Let's be, let's be nice and tidy. Come on now, chair. Get over there. Tuck the chair in, Simon. There we go. Right. Um, did, we didn't look in here, did we? Oh. Downtown accident kills a young woman. Friday, 10th of April, 2015. Toronto. Yesterday, a driver distracted by her children ran a red light causing her to blindside a car in the intersection of Bloor Street and Spadina Road. The mother and her children, travelling in a robust SUV, were left bruised but largely unharmed. The other party was less lucky. As the car crashed into the passenger side, Ashley Hall, 23, sustained devastating damage and suffocated from blood trapped in her lungs before the ambulance arrived. Her friend and driver, Simon Jarrett, 26, survived but with complicated results believed to leave him with permanent brain damage. The driver of the SUV whose name has not been released by police claims it was an accident and practically unavoidable. Right so Ashley is his, it doesn't say wife or girlfriend there so her friend and driver Simon Jarrett. So they were friends maybe they were romantically involved we don't know uh, and Ashley what is the person in his dream who's died. Oh hang on was there another side to this? Ah, nothing on that side. And that that wasn't that long ago, right? The, the date on this... There was a date on this, right? There was a date on something. 30th of April, 28th of April, 1st of May. Um, dude, we're, less, we're like three weeks after the accident. Or like at least a month or two, it depends when the story was written. We're, that's that's ridiculous. We should still be in hospital. What have we got here? Cinema Variety, the ultimate movie mag movie goer magazine. Summer blockbusters, Japanimation, bigger than ever. Stunts versus CGI. Who? What's a bottle movie? Massive recoil, flawless execution. Okay, bottom drawer. Got anything? No. Right, so we need to find this trace of fluid. Let's, uh... Oh, what have we got here? Oh, that's just that that film. Oh, let's, <laughs> let's check this out. John Hugh is a corrupt cop working in Hong Kong. One day his life, life is turned upside down as he meets Amber, a mysterious foreigner who is kept prisoner by the Golden Dragon Triads. Get ready to go rogue, for it's time to go against the Triad, the police, and the supernatural forces of the underground. Get ready! For massive recoil. <laughs> Directed by James Cameron. Right. Not James Cameron, that's not who I meant to insult. Is it? Whoever, whoever did Avatar and other such brainless films. Alright, well, is there anything else here? Where would the fluid be? I imagine it'll be in the bathroom, right? Medication in the bathroom. To Sam, we've not been opening our post. So if our friend has died, we've got a brain injury, we might be, you know, a little bit depressed, to say the least. Oh, we picked up our keys. Um, to do list. Remind Jesse, pick up meds and the flowers for funeral. So we've we've not Ashley's not had her funeral just yet. Which is a bit sad. Okay. Well we've got it. Okay, so we have to pull to open the doors as well. Lights, you see this, this, this is, I don't know if it's different wherever, whatever part of the world you're in, but light switches never get put inside bathrooms in England, as far as I understand it. Let's just forget about what's in there for now. Uh, okay, the, the coolant could be in here. What have we got? No? Toothpaste. Oh, Alright, awesome. We can really just press everything. This whole first episode is just going to be me opening stuff. 
Now, I can already see how this is going to go wrong in a horror sense, isn't it? Because I'm just going to open this and there's just going to be something behind it. You know, a, a diff in a different context. Alright, um, blood. Maybe bleeding from the nose from the T TBI, right? Let's make sure we uh, tidy up everything. Uh, okay, well, the coolant, the coolant is not in the bathroom, so... Might have put it in here somewhere. So we got a. Uh, oh! There's the coolant. Uh, to use an object you have acquired, press right trigger when the item is to play displayed on screen. Caution. Gadusin 755 for MRI and other nuclear contrasting scans. Okay. I've had this kind of thing done for my heart. And I have had. I don't know, have you guys ever had any sort of minor brain prob brain injuries or anything? I've, I've had... It feels like milk, but the taste, it's like sucking on a penny. I've had, uh, I've had two reasonably serious concussions in my life. Uh, the second one I was, I was, uh, on a brain injury ward for a few days. Um, which is uh, a bizarre place to be. Gonna look in everything. There could be some sweet information in here. Nothing but fast food. Should buy something healthier on my way home. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the guy in the bed opposite me had retrograde amnesia. Where he just every time he woke up he didn't know where he was or who he was. Quite scary. But also a little bit funny. Um in a in a you know, in a dark way. Because you when you're on a head injuries ward, you have to find a bit of humour in it. Alright, so I think that's everything we'll get from our apartment. Let's uh, let's make sure we leave the place nice and tidy. We don't want anyone snooping. We don't want to have any fires. We should turn the laptop off, but I don't think we can. I'm just I just want to stay in here, guys. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to leave because this is going to get. Harrowing to say, <laughs> to say the least. Right, I'm nervous. All right, Simon, we are on the sub. Do you have subways, uh, undergrounds in Toronto? That was good. This guy's talking to himself. Jesse. Jesse. Hey, Simon. I got your email. Just wanted to wish you good luck and let you know I got you covered. Thanks. I should be able to come to the store after the scan. Don't sweat it. I got Matt and Chris help me out. Matty from SNL? Uh, guess you didn't hear. He's coming in full time. Work in the comic section. That's Ashley's job. Yeah. Well, you know. Forget it. Not doing her any favors by leaving an empty spot. Not like she's coming back. Well, good luck. Hope they find a way to reverse the whole, you know, Dying thing? <laughs> Dying thing? You're the worst support ever. Yeah. <laughs> what should I say? I'll see you later, Jesse. Don't burn the place down while I'm gone. Over and out, buddy. This is such a bizarre way to be. Don't find me in a phone booth. All a big setup. This is such a bizarre way to be taking such a serious problem. <laughs> Your brain is bleeding. Okay, so um, Ashley looks like sounds like it was a call. She was a colleague and friend. But not necessarily. Jeez, it's dark. Hello, here. Dr. Munchy. Um, this place looks like it's under construction. This is so dodgy, right? Can we see ourselves? We can't see Where our is feet. Everyone? I thought this place would be busy. Yeah. Alright, so let me just get my button presses figured out. Uh, I'm, I'm playing on an Xbox controller, but I'm going to talk in PlayStation controller, because... Okay, X is, uh, X is jump, circle, crouch. Um, right, R, right triggers interact. Alright. I don't like this already. Why is that missing?
Let's do some snooping. Subject, scan now. Paul, where are you? We've got a few hours. I got hold of Simon Jarrett. Let's do this. I saw your laptop in the reception. You already here? This is so dodgy. David Munchie, get your stuff ready. Hi, Paul. Talk to Pace about using the lab this week. I've managed to book the scanner for tomorrow morning and again on Friday. It's not a lot, but they said we could use the empty reception area as a kind of office. It would allow us to use their computers to run models, and also, if a time slot opens up, we can get in there and use the scanner right away. I thought we could run some tests, tests tomorrow. We could do a scan of each other to learn the equipment. It's supposed to be pretty easy. On Friday, I'm hoping Dr. Erin Peake will send somebody over. She has a patient that was recently in a car crash. It should be interesting. Man, he doesn't even know how to use the MRI machine. We're locked out. I found some extra time in the lab today. Unfortunately, nobody told us about the code change. So I called security, talked to Professor Wei to have him vouch for our project and finally got hold of some honcho over at Pace's legal department that could re-grant us permission to use the lab. I'm not allowed to repeat the code in mails or text, but I'll leave a note or something in case we forget, Paul. This is so dodgy. These guys are like students writing a dodgy thesis. Right? This is, uh, this is so dodge. If there is a light to turn on, I will turn it on. Is there a zoom button? I'd really appreciate a zoom button. Every first person game needs a zoom. Every game needs a zoom. Clowns. Clowns. We're already going there. Okay, sorry. It's clowns already, man. I mean... It's just unnecessary, right? This is the place, right? It must be. Let's just call Machi real quick. Great. Got his phone turned off. That's okay. Uh, I can figure this out. They, yeah, they said that the code was on a piece of paper somewhere, so... Is there a zoom button? Is there a zoom button? Uh, da, 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 da. Run, throw, move. Nope. Textures on these piece, on these pages are too bad anyway. Oh, there we go. We'll be in here somewhere. Page 56. Can I read this? No. Uh, 2501. Write that down. 2501, or could be 2507. His uh, handwriting is atrocious. More reasons to not trust these people. It was Paul and David, right? Improvi improved reversed projector technique, 2501. Dell something method. Okay. What else have we got? Trial and error, sign news. Put your scalpel away, the brain can heal itself. The brain has an amazing transformative quality, a plasticity, that allows it to compensate and even heal itself, explains Paul Berg, a graduate student in neuroscience at York University in Toronto. It's this quality that Berg and his colleague David Munchie, a student of computer science, are hoping to encourage. It's about getting the brain to do the right thing, and we hope to accomplish this with simple things like exercise, therapy, and light medication. But Munchie and Berg are not looking for a miraculous pana panacea. I always forget how to say that. It's about pan panacea, panacea. I don't know. It's about finding the optimal treatment for each patient. They start out recording something called a Nak Nakajima neurograph. It's like a picture that indicates direction, says Munchie. 
Instead of a static brain scan, the neurograph can tell us where your brain is going. A neurograph. Can't say I've heard of that. It's not a long forecast, it's about milliseconds. With the right computer model, Bergen Munchi can then administer all kinds of treatments without risking actual harm to the real brain. We could try giving your brain an overdose of painkillers while running a marathon, suggests Berg. It's just a computer model. We're able, we're, we are able to fail treating you a million times over only to find the right way. And when they do find the, that optimal treatment, that's when they apply it to the real patient. It's still in the early stages, but their project has caught the attention from Pace Laboratories, who has promised to assist them with, their, with both equipment and workspace. We're very fortunate to get all this support, says Berg. Now we just need to get out of the limelight and actually do the work. Okay, so they've, they've designed a computer model of your brain and they will apply the treatments to the computer model to see what works in like a mathematical sense. Interesting. I mean, com computational models of the brain went through quite a radical change about 10 years ago in, in psychology. Uh, where they, they, they based them originally on like a, how a computer does it, where it, where the information that goes in is translated into like binary or whatever, it's translated into code, and then to retrieve the information, it has to be untranslated or retranslated back. Whereas, uh, and they started to design models of the brain in that fashion, but that's not actually what the brain does. The brain kind of saves the exact state it was perceived in, and when it retrieves it, it just reflashes that same state which is a lot quicker and they started to design computational models of the brain based on that and that's why we've seen a lot of de quicker better developments in ai over the past 15 years than we had done in the previous 40. all right it was 2501 i believe What was that sound about? Paul? Are you serious? What do I need to run for? Shut that door. Please don't do this to me already. James G, 9 to 12, Monday. Is it Monday? Give me the host. Man, I'm on edge. I told you guys, I'm not good with this stuff. Dude, why did you sign up to this experiment, Simon? Have you not read any of those horror books? Sally, Steve. Ah! I wasn't expecting that to open. Uh, David? Hello? Right, let's not go in there just yet. Who would sit in this room? It's so dark. All right, let's have a little snoop. Scan calculation in progress. All right. Orange juice. Don't think there's anything we can read in here. Calm before the storm, right? Nervous system, servers, I, don't, I mean, I don't see how a computational model would, at this point, could fully um, reimagine or predict the, the brain's processes. Oh, hi. Didn't hear you come in. Simon Jarrett, right? Dr. Munchie? Well, it's uh, just Mr. Munchie, but I'm working on it. <laughs> Actually, you're helping me right now. Oh, for Is God's sake. Is this part of your thesis work? Yeah. It's a study I'm doing with my colleague, Paul Berg. We hope to design a gentle way to work with brain reconstruction to help people like you. Oh, did you uh, 
take the tracer fluid? Yes. Yes, yes I did. Great. Well, we can start whenever you're ready. Oh, dude, this is a horrendous idea. Never trust anyone who wears a button-up shirt with double breast pockets. That's such a faux pas. Hang on, just let me try and read some of your notes. Please, have a seat. No, Mr. Non-Doctor. Where's your assistant? You've never even met me before. We just spoke on the phone. You've not even done any tests on me. For the love of God. I didn't even shut the door. Get this out of the way. You are Simon Jarrett, correct? Right. Toronto, Canada. Munchie. Born 1988, July 16th. Right. Flat neurograph. Version 6. Good. All files in order. Will this hurt? It's just a scan. It'll hurt about as much as getting your picture taken. Indians thought cameras would steal their souls. Is that so? Well, let's hope they're wrong. <laughs> Ready? Say cheese. Mr. Munchie, did something go wrong? Yes. Oh, man. This isn't funny. No, it isn't. I, I'm not supposed to put myself in... Stressful situations. This is kind of stressing me out. How did I get here? That is worrying. I can figure this out. I just need to stay calm. No need to make things worse. Yeah, there's blood on the floor. There's a bunch of stuff broken. Someone's tried to get in or out of this room. Gonna crouch here. Can we put a protective suit on anyone? You know that there's gonna be like an early game jump scare, you know, just to kind of set the tone. Automated unlock terminal from service console. I don't want to open that. Insert Omni tool to access. Crap. Pathos 2. Omni tool chip installer. Build, shape, and optimize your Omni tool with fully custom customized tools and assistance. Toolbox. Alright, do I need to smash this? What is going on here, man? So... That didn't work. Give me the tool, man. 
Fine. Fine. You stay there. I'm just going to stay here, guys. The end of the playthrough, I think. <laughs> this is, uh, this is bad. This is so bad. Left trigger is run. Okay, we can't open that either. I'm guessing we need to s smash the window then. Just gonna stay crouched. Don't know if we should open this. It doesn't really matter. The window's smashed anyway. Right? It's a quicker way of getting in, I suppose. Something has wrecked this place up. We just hit a little save or load point there. All right, we need an Omni tool. Guessing whatever's in here might not be able to operate the door buttons. Excuse? It's working better than expected. They're having a really hard time getting the doors open. Call. Permit seal as many as you can. Rather not take any chances. Roger. Did you cut off the factory floor? All done. Should keep most of them out. I'm on my way to lock off the comms center. Just make sure to leave a way out of here. Trust me, I'll get you the data safe and sound. We just need to make sure we leave enough power running so we don't have to return. I hear that. See you back at camp. How did I do that? It's working better than expected. They're having a really hard time getting the doors open. Call Permaseal as many as you can, rather not take any chances. Roger. Did you cut off the factory floor? All done. Should keep most of them out. I'm on my way to lock off the comp center. Just make sure to leave a way out of here. Trust me, I'll get you the data safe and sound. We just need to make sure we leave enough power running so we don't have to return. I hear that. See you back at camp. So there's something here and they're struggling to they're struggling to open the doors. I don't know what that is, but uh, it can stay in there. <laughs> oh, man. What fresh hell is this? Hey, stop that can. Right, do I want to shut the door because I'm locking myself in with something? Whatever that is. Oh, 
Home is a state of mind. It's weird because it's like all metal, you know? Doesn't look like some sort of organic creature, does it? Right, I'm gonna shut this. Sorry I'm going so slow, guys, but I'm. Uh, there's something here, so I feel like until we see it first time, I'm gonna be pretty anxious. This is... Hello! Something's wrecked up this... ...bog. Problem is, the guy on the intercom said not to remove... ...to make sure everything stays sealed, and I just took a seal off that door. So there's something behind this door. That's so that's locked, so that's our only way forward then, yeah. Let's get some running practice. <laughs> okay, that's uh, got a padlock on it. This is probably the slowest start to this game. The ambient sound is really going to do me in here. Right, something's going to burst out from behind this door. I, I, you know it will. Shiza. Stay away, I have a pneumatic seal. We've got like mechs in here. Oh no. Don't do it. What the hell is all this, man? Oh, this is grim. Might regret regret that, but so these are just like drones. It's like tentacles coming out of the computer. All right, fine. Let's go. I'll get braver as we go on. I hope. Okay, I need to jump. Hello there, Mr. Robot. Hey you, can you talk? Can you talk like the others? You talking to me? Structure gel? Yeah, you do. So weird. How's 
doesn't make any sense. I'm going to shut you down now, okay? Yeah, you're creepy as hell, so I'm going to shut you down. Okay. Where did that come from? Oh. Hello. Left bumper. I don't like this man. Something's opened up the way through there. Is that thing, is something moving over there? Looks like it. There's something moving over there, man. I am crouched. I shall remain crouched. Oh no, it's not a thing. It's like a, a doorway. So maybe we could interface with all of those robots. Whatever these creatures are, they're like part mechanical, right? They're like oozing oil and stuff. Moving while crouching is less noisy and reduces the chance of being noticed. Noticed by what? Okay. Something's coming through that door, man. And I'm in a... I've just cornered myself. That's the only way forward though, right? Is that the only way forward, really? There's something in here I've not seen yet. Come on, dude. This isn't the way we came in. Okay, electrical current. Are they going to be attracted to that? Shush. This is the fence we couldn't get through that's got a padlock on it, right? Don't know where I'm going. Oh, we need an Omni tool, man. Ah, God damn it.
We need an Omni tool, man. So is there something in here that I've just not seen yet? Because the fact that we were told to crouch... And we're like undoing all the sealed doors. this something? No? Alright, people. We're going to have to do this. Nope, nope, nope. Can I throw something at the button? Can we get a torch? Or something? I'm, uh, I'm really on edge, man. I'm really on edge. Is that a person? Encased in there. Maybe I shouldn't have shut that behind me, but... We should try and avoid getting ooze all over ourselves. Hello? Alright, great. I don't know how to get out of here. Tension. Does it now? Uh, unsure where to go. Can we not squeeze? Come on now. Oh, there's the Omni tool. You alright there, buddy? You don't need a head. Right, no one attack me while I'm reading the Omni Tool guide. <laughs> the Omni Tool is an advanced interface for accessing, managing, and controlling computerized systems. The onboard intelligence includes an open set of behaviors and protocols to enable the, the user to automate routine actions through basic logical charts. Over time, the Omni tool will automatically adapt its programs to cover subconscious behavior to optimize work and minimize user error. The Omni tool has a short range signal used for basic or automated actions such as opening doors while performing complex operations. Such as opening doors. While performing complex operations, the Omni tool should be physically connected to a workstation or terminal. To upgrade your device, simply slide operators into the main or auxiliary slot. The main slot has a standard C1121 connector which allows the user to fit most market Cortex chips into the Omni tool. Note that introducing an additional AI will override the onboard intelligence. The auxiliary slot is a multi-connector fitting for a large range of tool chip models including but not limited, limited to etc. Smart access computer. Okay. I feel like as soon as we pick this up we're going to get bushed. Uh, Jane. Uh, how do I access my inventory? Okay. Okay, so now we have to go back out, which is the real problem. Okay, no accessories. Pills. I just don't wanna don't wanna leave this 
need this room, to be honest. Shiza. Sure, where we should go first. That might have been a bad idea. I'll I'll get a better sense of when I can walk and when I have to crouch, guys. I will, but until the Probably go in the opposite direction to that. But. Hey. Help me, Jane. Jane! Right, you suck, Jane. Just wanted to tell you that. This gate is closed, right? I don't know how adaptive these enemies are going to be or whether it's very, you know, it's going to trigger at certain linear points. Alright, we need to go back. We will be crouched. You, sir, are locked. Whatever these things are, they can clearly move around quite easily. So uh, I think they'd be able to jump over a chain link fence like that quite easily, yeah? They struggle opening doors. Yoga. That's been ripped open. I can't shut that door. See, why is the button on the opposite opposite side, dude? Come on, Jane. Service console up to three, including pilot seat activated. Is 
status please status status I forget how to say it um whoops silly upsilon run setup remote access denied servers offline main power suspended initiate while setup program unreliable denied emergency systems have three days remaining um so subject Simon Jarrett terminal scan David Munshi, Toronto. What the hell? He's put us in here voluntarily. Um, manage the tool chip. Welcome back, Louise Meron, Upsilon. Your Omnitool is in perfect condition, but not fitted with a tool chip. Note that without a tool chip, your FST kit will be unavailable, including your cross-site security access. To continue using your designated privileges, please insert a tool chip and run an update. We've not got a tool chip. Uh, your Omnitool is in perfect condition, but not fitted with a custom Cortex chip. You are currently being serviced by the default onboard intelligence helper Jane. Note that installing a Cortex chip will override the helper and may severely alter your user experience. I know they told you that field technicians would get full access throughout Pesos 2. I'm here to tell you that's not going to happen. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to get in your way. We need you guys to keep this place up and running, but there needs to be at least some level of security on these things. I don't want to hear you barge into some quarantined area at Omicron and just knock down the whole place with some virus or whatever the hell they're doing over there. This is what you can do. You'll be able to use it to open doors, basically all of them. If you can't, there's something wrong or someone didn't want you in there. Then what do you do? You shove that Omnitool into a terminal and see if you can't get around it somehow. I mean, sometimes you'll need to get into places where you don't belong. Just find a way. You're an engineer for crying out loud. What else? Take care of your gear. Don't be an asshole. That's about it, really. My name is John Strohmeyer, Pathos 2 security operative. I got an office at Theta. Come see me if you got any issues you can't handle yourself. All right, Johnny. Good luck. Sorry, I'm forgetting all the buttons. All right, what's in here? Okay. Tool chip found. Okay, manage the tool chip. Um, your Omni tools, yep, to run an update. Alright. Sweet. Do I need to do that with all these chips? Tool chip security cipher updated. Thank you. Level 3. Okay, so I guess I just need to leave them there. Huh. Okay, we can read this now. Um, pilot seat number three, Upsilon. Okay, great. Pilot reports. Pilot report number zero one zero five three. Pilot Carl Semkin. Support Amy Azaro. Vehicle Tugger UH three. Task: Replace the heat shields on the southern flue. Result: Success. Production restored. Notes: Semkin reported uncharacteristic levels of nausea after the mission. Diagnostics show a spike of electromagnetism surrounding the pilot helmet which is believed to be the cause of Semkin's symptoms. No indication to what created this anomaly. Electromagnetism. The pilot system has become increasingly unreliable. Is there something behind me? Everyone who's been using it the last couple of months has been having headaches and spells of nausea. 
Last week, Gavin was knocked out for 30 hours when trying to direct a helper cluster. This is not acceptable. We will figure this out, but for the time being, I'm shutting down the usage of the pilot system. This means you'll have to do some more heavy lifting, performing the operations through programming or physical labor. No one is happy about this, so don't bother complaining. Jane Adams, Chief Factor. <sighs> All right, guys. Tell you what. Um, something uh, is going to happen when we leave this room now that we've got the tool. So um, I think I'm going to leave this first episode there. I know we've hardly made any progress, but I, I have to go slow. I can't play these games at any kind of pace because I'm scared and I, I don't want to miss anything. So uh, let me know any tips. Um, I'll try and keep these episodes in the future to around 50 minutes. Uh, there'll be two episodes going up each day. After, after today, I'll give this episode a bit of t time to breathe. So let me know any tips for exploring, things I should be looking out for, anything like that. Um, and yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the start to Soma. I am shitting bricks. So I guess the game is succeeding. But we'll see where the story goes as we continue. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Leave me a thumbs up if you did. Just remember everybody, never trust an on crate. I'll see you back here next time.